So Charlotte, I'm going to come to you with the first question, if that's okay. So the travel industry accounts for about 5% of all CO2 emissions. What is it, our advice, SAP Concur's advice, to both travellers and what should they be taking uh, actions moving forward? Okay. So first off, uh, some context around the 5%. That is for the travel industry as a whole. That doesn't re uh, reflect the corporate travel industry. So within that, we anticipate there's probably 1.5% of that travel industry emissions is coming from the corporate travel space. Now, what's important to remember then, you, you have to put another layer of context into that, is that the carbon footprint from business travel is very different depending on whether a customer of mine is in the manufacturing industry or in the financial services industry, for example. So in manufacturing, the carbon footprint from business travel is actually a tiny slice of really where they should be prioritizing versus you flip that over in the financial services and it's, it's a big chunk. It's something that senior leadership are, are looking at to get addressed. Um, but what I will say is the common theme, regardless of industry, is the traveler, right? And the traveler wants to do the right thing, and the traveler wants to be part of an organization who is doing the right thing. Travelers, we know, and, and we're all mostly here, I imagine, employed by somebody, we want to work for companies who align with our own personal goals. And a lot of people's personal goals at the moment are really becoming centered around sustainability. Um, so those travelers exist irrespective of vertical. So corporate customers not only have this coming from the top down, but their travelers are hugely important from the bottom up to start uh, reflecting some of this. Um, Pre-pandemic, um, honestly, I can't say the urgency was there with sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's been there for a long time, but in the business travel space, it wasn't really there. Post-pandemic, we've got a huge uptake in the number of customers that are coming to us about this topic. So I actually ran some information prior to coming together today. And just with my team alone and the discussions we are having with customers, we are 86% up on sustainability-led discussions this year than we were last year. Yeah. Okay. Now, I know last year, little travel, travel managers probably busy with other initiatives, but 86%, that's huge, right? That's a big shift in those conversations. Um, so we are starting to see the urgency pick up. Part of that urgency is fueled by the fact that there is such a good opportunity at the moment to avoid travel, right? And that sounds crazy coming from me. I, I work with online booking. Surely I want more bookings to come back into the system. But actually our travel managers now have this moment in time where travel has been reduced. There's been additional levels of approval or questioning before those travelers book their travel. Why go back to where we were? Just pivot the reasons for those questions now to say, do you need to travel? Are you aware that you know this trip is going to use up X percent of our carbon footprint budget for the year and try not to let the travel climb up to the same levels that it was. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that's where a lot of travel managers are trying to capitalize at the moment. Really, okay. there's an opportunity Definitely. there. Well, I think that leads on to Daryl, if you don't mind me. Where do you think, I mean, has the travel industry been, dis, you know, uh, almost ignored sustainability due to the pandemic? I mean, what's happening out there at the moment and, and you know, is it returning? Yeah, it's a great question. Thanks, Paul. And I think I'd like to take you back to October 19 when we were at the GBTA together. Charlotte, you and I were there. And some sustainability research that we did at the time told us that 60% of travel managers were getting requests for more sustainable options and a sustainable policy, not just from the travelers, but also from leadership. And in the travel industry, often there's something that's driven top down, but you don't get buy-in from the travelers, or there's something that the travelers want, mm -hmm. but, the, but, the, but the company's not happy to facilitate. This was a real unique point in, the, in our industry where everybody wanted more sustainable options. However, at the time, only 30% of travel managers had you know, policies that encouraged or mandated the use of sustainable suppliers. So that big data was a few years ago. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody kind of knew they had to do something but they weren't quite sure what it should be. And at the time, some of the things that people were talking about was they wanted to see messaging about video conferencing. 
through the, through the booking process. They wanted to be able to be empowered to take direct flights rather than indirect flights. They were thinking about ride share. They were thinking about taking journeys out of the skies and, and onto rail. So these were all hot topics at the time back in 2019. Yeah. And, and then, of course, COVID hits. And what happens? We, we, we all stop traveling. But then, while we weren't traveling, we were seeing images of crystal clear canals in Venice. We were seeing smog, you know, smog hit cities clear and people began to see the hills and the mountains around their cities for the first time in, in many years. So I think that immediately reinforced the desire of the traveler to want to do the right, the right thing, to choose more sustainable options, to think about, as Charlotte said, whether they needed to travel at all. But then look, look what's happened. Through the last year or so, we've all been collaborating virtually. We've used Zoom and Teams. And so on. So you know the, the, that has happened. We've, and I don't think we'll ever get back to travelling ridiculous distances for internal meetings and a, and, a, and a catch up with colleagues. That can always be done virtually. But then we also have people now from a well-being perspective who are taking a direct flight. Their company want them to stay on the plane, not come out into an airport queue and get back onto a plane, and so on and so forth. And ride sharing. Hertz have reported a huge uplift in people, colleagues c coming together and driving from. LA to San Francisco rather than flying. Mm -hmm. So COVID has actually delivered. If you think back to those things that people wanted in 2019, they've been delivered, ironically, by COVID. The, the, the message is actually reinforced, not diluted by what's happened through yeah. the pandemic. And if coming out of that, if somebody's going to take one flight rather than 10, they really want to make that choice count. They want to choose the most sustainable option. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. So who is the most important element of that sustainability journey? Is it the corporate or is it the traveller? Do you know what? It's, it's, it's both equally. The corporate has to you know, have the right policies and procedures in place. It has to enable the traveller to feel like they are able to make the right choice. So, for example, you know, does the, is the company happy for the traveller to spend a little bit more on a hotel around the corner that has a more sustainable policy? So, for example, I've stayed in, a hotel, in, in hotels where my cup and spoon individually plastic wrapped, individual plastic wrapped sugar cubes for breakfast. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, carbon is important, but it's not the whole story of sustainability. We all have a part to play with, with plastics. We've got in a plane and the blanket and the, and the pillow might be plastic sure. wrapped. I'd be happy for mine to wrapped in, be wrapped in cardboard or something yeah. else. It doesn't have to be plastic. So the first thing is the, the company has to enable the travelers to feel empowered. But then the traveler, for their, for their own uh, perspective, has to have the right information at the point of booking. It's crucial that we as a technology provider and working with our partners deliver as much information to the traveler at the point of purchase that they feel they're informed and able to make the right choices. Okay, so, so what's the single most important thing that can deliver the best outcome? I think certainly in terms of our role, it's, it's that information. So if you think that there are three things that we can do to help both the traveler and the corporate. The, f the first thing is influence. So we've talked about presenting the right options at, at the point of purchase. Are we showing rail compared to air? Are we showing the carbon of, of each? But also, are we enabling the traveler to report back to the business? I had an experience, I stayed in a hotel, and it was all, you know, from a sustainability perspective, it was awful, I don't want to stay there again. Showing, those, show, showing that information through the, through the tool. But also measuring. You can't, you, know, you can't control what you can't measure. So that information, again, filters through to the organization, making sure the, the organization has the, the range of information it needs uh, but then finally, and I know this is a, a, three, a three answer rather than a one answer, but bear with me. The other thing is celebrate your success. If you have passionate travelers who are, are passionate about sustainability, communicate the success the business has had. Have some messaging in the tool that says, this month we've saved this, or this change in our policy has delivered X, Y, and Z. So I think that perhaps of all of them is the most important thing communicate what has been delivered and communicate the success. Great, thank you. So just the final point on sustainability, yeah. Charlotte, because you know, what are we seeing that travel suppliers are doing that we want travel managers to get behind and, and OBTs and travel management companies? Yeah, so, and, and I think first to tie back to your question about what's more important, the, the, the leadership with the corporate or the individual, that's a circle right? Because without one, you don't get the other. So without the, the people, the employees doing the right thing, you're not fueling the wheels that make the corporations work. So I think there's an equal importance there. Um, individually, a lot of people, a lot of organization are doing really great things at the moment. 
and a lot of people have taken the pandemic as an opportunity to put redeploy resource internally into you know writing a sustainability program i think the challenge we all face in this this industry is that individually we're running this race and there are very few points where we're teaming up to do this together and the the pace that we need to deliver the return on sustainability we're going to have to team up at some point so again when i'm speaking to my customers i would i'm advising them to look for those opportunities where parts of the industry are coming together because if you come together you're a bigger force to drive a quicker change and and i think for as long as we keep running in our lanes we're going to get there slower absolutely so. great thank you so so i think we should move tact if we can so just for the audience sap concur uh commissioned a, a, a report uh, from the Wakefield University to drive and look at the uh, uh, percentage of direct bookings that we're seeing across our client base. And interestingly, what came out of that information was that 46% of travel managers are saying to us that they're going to either allow or will accept that there's going to be direct bookings. 39% of travelers are actually saying that they're going to need the ability to make direct bookings outside of a recognized channel, whether that be TMC or OBT. Um, so Charlotte, I just wondered if I can come to you because those numbers speak for themselves, but, but you know, what do you think is actually driving those numbers? Why is that in place today? So as with everything, again, in the industry, we have the pre-pandemic answer and, and the state of play today. Um, pre-pandemic, I think we can all attest to the fact that there were additional benefits for travelers who booked directly through the suppliers, be that in the form of loyalty points, room upgrades, Wi-Fi inclusions in the rates. There was just this incentivization that took place to get travelers there. Now, the time that we're in now, the traveler wants all of those things still, but there is also this need for additional information about you know, how they stay where they're staying, how they travel on the mode of transport they're selecting. And so I think where we're seeing through this survey, the numbers come up, is that need for information from the source. And maybe this in part ties back to the point before where everybody's individually doing great things, but those dots aren't joining all the time. All these suppliers have put in great clean and safety, you know, whatever, all the different measures are called across the suppliers. But that, that information flow isn't always there through the whole booking channel for the traveler. So if I want to see what I need to do to travel on a train or to stay at a particular hotel, the first place I'm probably going to go is onto that supplier website because I know if they can't get the information there, then there's no chance it's going to be passed down through the chain. So I think from, from where we are today, those figures are also being driven by the fact that travellers just need the information firsthand. Absolutely. So, so you mentioned so the suppliers offering benefits yeah. for booking direct. Can you yeah. expand on what you mean by that? Yeah, so, so like I said, I think it's loyalty points. Um, y you know, we, we know through our TripLink product and the stats that we get out of that, that I think the, the largest leakage, it's a horrible word, we all know it's a horrible word, but it is a word, um, the, the, the biggest proportion of invisible spend is going in the hotel space, right? So then you just drill into that, what are the hotels offering those travelers mm -hmm. at the direct point of sale that they're not getting through the channel? And really it will tie into that, the loyalty points, the upgrades, mm -hmm. the you priority check-ins, um, Wi-Fi. So really, I think that's where sure. that sits. Okay. So, so I know we've seen a, a, a growth in the percentage of bookings actually going direct yeah. outside of those recognised channels yeah. today. Um, but and, and travel managers have actually shut down online booking yeah. tools because they want them to go to to consultants to get the right information, yeah. certainly due to pandemic and COVID. So, what is it that travel managers can do now to bring back the online booking tool and yeah. to, as I say, get back to some, some sort of normality. So we're in a very different time and 
And I have a broad variety of customers who shut down all online travel to those who left it open, but put the faith in internal approval processes to know when people should be booking. Um, those decisions were made at a moment in time, and for every organization, it was the right decision at, at that time. But if we think back to that moment in time, there, was no, there were no vaccinations. The testing wasn't at scale like it is today. Um, the border situation was volatile everywhere. There was so much uncertainty to fuel those decisions to take the bookings into the offline environment. You look at where we are today, and I'm, we for sure we'll have people here from borders other than the UK, but the vaccination program is in, the testing is in. We all know where we need to go to get to information about what we need to travel. That wasn't there 18 months ago. So I think online booking will come back. I'm seeing it with my customers come back, certainly in the domestic mode. I don't have any customers still booking domestic offline. That's all shifted back online. But I think it is going to take, whether it's the travel manager or the senior leadership teams within the organizations, recognizing that we have to pass that baton back to the traveler to a degree. So pre-pandemic, most organizations I know put the trust in the traveler to know if they needed to get a visa. Sure, they would facilitate the notifications and the tools to go out and get that visa, but to a degree, you expect your traveler to have a passport and source a visa. This now is going to need to step into that. We are all acutely aware we've been living this for so long now that there's nobody who's going to be caught out by not knowing that they might need a document or a, you know proof of vaccine, proof of test to get anyway, apart from the people coming into Excel today who didn't have either to show. <laughs> um, but I think... Now we have to put our trust back in travelers. Um, travel managers can't take accountability for that long term. It, it's too difficult. The industry is too siloed as well in the way we're capturing that information. So I think that's going to be the success of bringing Absolutely. it back. So, so then an online booking tool itself or a self-booking tool as it's referred mm -hmm. to is the point of interaction with the yeah. traveler. So yeah. technology is the way forward? Um, I, I think... Technology is the time we live in, right? Everybody needs that technology, and even more so now than at the beginning of this pandemic. We're, we're so adept at, you know, we've all done it. We've been on a Teams meeting, shut that down, jumped to Zoom. You know, technology is front and center for all of us. So, yes, I think it does need to come back. Um, certainly, again, it's the same old story for those point-to-point -point bookings, those easy ones where you don't need the skill and expertise of the sure. consultant. We just have a duty as a tech provider to try and surface information or give our corporates the ability to overlay information into, into sure. the tools to yeah. convey messaging. Good stuff, great, thank you. So, so Daryl, do you mind if I come to you? Just as some final, final words of advice, really. What are, you know, as the audience here today, as travel industry starts to recover, what, what would you recommend? What's your words of advice to the industry? Well. You mentioned the Wakefield survey a little while ago. 96% of respondents said they are ready and willing and want to travel. So there is demand. You know, the travelers do want to travel. And actually, 80% of those respondents suggested they saw harm in their career, their, you know, their, their professional development, and even their personal well-being if they couldn't travel. So we know the demand is there. But those travelers need to be protected. They need to feel safe and secure. They need to feel that like the company has their arms wraps around them through the whole of the process. As Charlotte has mentioned, you're know, the pre-booking, pre searching, getting the right information, knowing that the duty of care program is, is, is correct and, and, and up to date. So travel will happen, travel is coming back, but travelers certainly want to be, uh, want to be protected. And I think the other thing is, of, of, the, of the respondents, 79% of 29 to 39 year olds will be choosing who they work for based upon whether they have the right sustainability tools, the right policies. So from a talent acquisition perspective, this has never been more important. And I think finally, it will come as no surprise given my, the network of partners I support. The research tells us that the role of the TMC is still there. But you know, the, the TMC is seen as the trusted advisor. 
Charlotte's absolutely right. Direct booking is absolutely, you know, is increasing. There are suppliers who want those bookings. But at the same time, after a tough 18 months, the TMC has been there. Even while they haven't been taking bookings, they've been giving advice and guidance and, and really, you know, it takes a 9-11 or a volcano or in this case, unfortunately, a pandemic to just remind ourselves 364 days a year, you don't know you need a TMC. But that, that one time when you really need them, they, they've been there for their customers. And so certainly my advice would be, you know, trust your TMC and support them. Great. So, f so for me, just, just sort of paraphrasing what you're saying there, it's, it's from the online booking tool, which is point of interaction. It's handing off to a TMC that, that gives you the kid gloves, the, the, the protection that you need. Absolutely. We've just heard that 46% of supplier, you know, travel managers expecting supplier bookings to come through. So, so how does that tie up? How does that correlate? We, we talked about TripLink, and so you're absolutely right. You know, the, the, the key is to get, we've talked about information repeatedly, so to get the right information you know, via the TMC or the direct booking you know, back to the ecosystem so that however a traveler has made a booking, their, corporate, their, their, their company knows where they are. So that you know, if it's 11 o'clock at night and, and the, the, the flight's canceled for whatever reason, whatever it may be, it's, imp it's imperative that whether booked direct or whether booked through the TMC, our TripLink tool is there to bring this information back to one point. Mm -hmm. That means that we can then feed that information off via our APIs with suppliers such as I ISOS. So that, you know, again, it comes back to that traveler feeling cared for and, 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 and secure. I think the final thing I would add as well is travelers haven't seen often their families for 18 months, for two years. So expect a little bit of, I hate this word, pleasure on the end of a business trip. If somebody hasn't made a business trip for two years, they're gonna to want to see if they can their family or friends or colleagues and, and tag on an extra few days. So I think that's something else that we'll, we'll certainly we'll see a resurgence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, so Charlotte, just the same to you really. What, what's your advice as travel returns? So I just want to segue a little bit from um, Daryl there. I think the key word is ecosystem now. I, I think we're, we're long through the point where one shop does everything. I think we are in an ecosystem model. You know, TripLink is there to bring bookings into the ecosystem we talk about. We don't talk about bringing it into travel. It comes into an ecosystem where we can share that information with anyone our corporate needs us to do that with. Um, so I think definitely recognizing and allowing an ecosystem to flourish moving forwards and partnering is ultimately allows you to get the best of the best for all those different channels. Sure. Um, but I have to come back to sustainability because you know it, it's a passion of mine. And I would like to acknowledge the BT, uh, the Business Travel Show organizers for taking away the plastic that holds the cards this year. Do you know what? That's one small thing that can make such a huge difference. And that's what I'd encourage corporations to do. Yes, we need better data with carbon footprint reporting. Yes, we need better alignment. But that isn't a reason to wait and not do anything. Because all of those small building blocks along the bottom of taking away the plastic sleeves or, you know, encouraging or promoting a certain supplier over another one because you've done your due diligence with that supplier, you know they're ticking all of your green strategy boxes. Um, start where you can with what you can control. The rest will fall in, into place. Okay. I, I really do believe that. Good stuff. J uh, I'm gonna throw a question at you here. From a supplier point of view, some suppliers make it more difficult because they're taking things out of recognized paths, GDSs mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. or hotels encouraging people to go direct. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe I'll come to your, you first, Daryl, if you don't mind on this one. Um, how do we work with those suppliers to try and bring them back into that ecosystem and work closely with them? That's such a great question, uh, Paul. And it, it, we, we keep coming back to information, don't we? But the, the challenge the industry faces is standardization of data. Does what one hotel chain report as its carbon performance or other things match what another one does? Absolutely not. So, you know, we, 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 partners, I think, are the answer. You know, no one company has all of the right answers. We can't be afraid to work with partners, to encourage partners to collaborate with us. So, you know, you write about the, the, the individual chains, the individual airlines, but also let's as an industry work together to get towards some, some standard data, some standardized data so we know we're comparing apples with apples. Yes, we yes. talked about enabling travelers to make the right choices. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for them to do so when they don't have the, all, all of the right data. We had a conversation with a, with a partner just a couple of days ago, and the conversation was as granular as, 
does the airline use an electric pushback robot or does it use a diesel engine? Does the plane taxi to the runway with one engine or two? These are things that matter and actually can make, it, Charlotte mentioned little things adding up to a big difference. They matter. But the question is, how do we find out about it? And so I think that, that would be my answer. Partners yeah. will come together to create the ecosystem or to support the ecosystem and bring information in, in, back, into the, uh, back into our world. Yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Because I think from what we're seeing as well on, 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 you know, as, as, as part of Concur is there's a, there's a number of uh, elements that are coming together at the moment. As I say, some of the airlines are taking content away, but yet they're introducing sustainable products, such as pre-ordering of food as an example, uh, saves on waste, saves on weight, saves on fuel, and so on and so forth. So it's important for us and get to our client base to ensure that they understand that and take those opportunities away. I wish pre-ordering food helped my weight. Uh, <laughs> yes, Lock, lockda lockdown unfortunately yeah, came in. Um, but look guys, thank you very, very much indeed. I really do appreciate your views on this. and, and um, you know, thank you to the audience for, for stepping in today and, and listening today. And thank you for those at home. Um, and uh, I say, appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.